Word up. Okay, so as per usual, we'll see where we go with this. So today, this morning, would be the morning of the 25th of June. I don't know if any of any of you uh, saw the moon or not, but it seemed to be in a different position in the sky than where it normally is. And, and Maybe this is just my perception where I'm going through uh, internally. Uh, also, maybe it's because we usually have cloud coverage here at this certain time. Or something like that to where we can't normally see the moon at this specific period of time. And so it seems new to me because I can actually visibly see it without any cloud coverage. <laughs> All things to take into consideration, but regardless, it still seemed very unusual. So this guy, of course, J. Chris, he has an awesome channel. He attracts some pretty fucking awesome people towards his channel. He has people to call in towards his shows, to his shows, and uh, these people are very interesting people, and it, it's nice to listen to them and to listen to their engagement. And, uh, it's nice to be reminded that uh, there are at least some people that try to think for themselves and are, are and are willing to admit that they don't they don't necessarily know for sure. They they just this is their experience and this is what they think maybe, but you know. We shall see what comes to be. This this was a very good uh <laughs> show here where they touched upon quite a few things that are very reflective of the collective. <laughs> and I have been kind of taking my time to see how the collective responds, what is able to, uh, what more and more people are able to tap into and to see the control structure's response to that. To become more and more aware of the subtle influences at play um, within and at large, so to speak. In the show, in, in the grand orchestra, orchestration of human experience, but also a manipulation of that. Because there, there are so many things at play, it's, uh, you can get lost in the sauce, or you can let go of it and get found within whatever process you are getting quote unquote lost in. This is kind of like a very similar and reminiscent of having strong meditation experiences, uh, healing experiences, maybe experiences with entheogens, plant spirit medicines, 
where the mentality that you've been used to grabbing onto or grabbing a hold of, or for most of us, most all of us, have been taught to gravitate <laughs> our mind. Hmm. There's got to be there's got to be a clever word with gravity and, and magnetism. Magnetate. <laughs> your focus into a certain mentality and this is the indoctrination system that we've been brought up in it's a entrainment camp to entrain your ma mind to encapsulate your mind and lim yes limited but this is going to be a process that happens anytime we try to describe something with words and it's going to take some experience and some time, quote unquote, to uh, really come to understand, understand what what it what it what that means. Because for for most everyone, and especially whenever you're first dissolving this layer, you're not going to be used to experiencing things without words, without attaching a label to them, to the experience. Or, when you do, you don't really take it, you take it for granted, as in you don't uh, imprint a, a strong emotional response to that, and thus remember it, uh, imprint it within the cellular level of your, your waters. The, the memory within you, within your body, and being able to unite, bridge the feelings of the body and how your mind interprets it, how you've been taught to interpret things, dissolving that, allowing your mind to tap into the true, essential feelings, raw. So, this is kind of the purpose of meditation, of accessing this no-mind state, and just feeling, listening, dissolving, accessing the void, Anything and everything is a meditation. Life is a meditation because mind is a meditation. Like, uh, what is God? God is mind. God is a meditation of mind. God is a decision from the mind state. Yes, first, mind. Connectivity to all aspects of beingness. Then, a decision. What do we do now? There are many layers to existence, to life, to beingness. There are many layers also, as below, so above, to God. The, the mentality of what that word means. Uh, whatever you, you have come to know that word to mean. Creator. Intellect. Divine consciousness. Whatever you need to do to, to understand and understand what that word means for you. Because it's just a word and words don't really mean jack shit unless you connect it to the true vibrations. This is kind of uh, David Icke's, the truth vibrations. This is, this is what it is. The, the true vibratory experience existence, the isness, and existing within that, exploring it without having a need to label it, just experience it, experiencing it for what it is. And relishing in the beauty of it all. 
and that's not to be taken in, <laughs> you know, it's all love and light and, you know, new agey stuff. But this is kind of the state that you can tend to gravitate towards when you realize and have done enough inner work in clearing out the garbage within your body and within your mind because those two are very much connected so whenever you clear one out it clears the other out and whenever you really focus on clearing say the body out it's going to have a strong effect on the mind and usually this is why people do uh, a fast and they never do one again or they do a deep distilled water fast and then they shortly after relapse, so to speak, as in they go right back into their old comforts and mindset and habits. So this is the beauty of what fasting does. Fasting from what? Fasting from a certain t mode that we're, we have been used to doing. Uh, Fasting could be take the form of cutting away from the things that we are normally doing. Changing up our routine can be a fast. Fasting from normality, from habitual behaviors. And then the extreme is fasting with just a certain substance. It could, could be many different things. And then there is also an extreme with fasting, uh, a truth in that. Uh, I will touch upon in, in a later video because that's a little bit too deep of a topic to really go into right now and give it justice. But uh, there are levels of beingness that are where uh, the true essential nature of what you are, where you don't need to do anything, you just are it. And it's not even necessarily dissolving into the all in just that, but it's experiencing uh, your ego or persona, or just the layers of beingness that you are, that what you thought you are, what, what you thought you were, what you, what you have been led to believe you are, dissolving that, deciding for yourself what you are, dissolving that, swimming within, allowing, floating, and just everything, the web of life, whatever, whatever, <laughs> you can't, it's hard to describe things that, you know, I'm using words to describe these things, so I can only do so much with that. And using these tonalities and vibrations and <laughs> angles and angels and this dimension of demonstrating that the angels and the demons are what you make of them because everyone has their quote unquote angels and demons because that's just part of existence and reality and part of the mind so that's, that's how it is with all religion is they're just trying to put words on uh things that we experience always in always but the problem is you know motherfuckers have manipulated that and come to they were actually told that this is how it is and that this is what we can do with it we can unite everyone we can become more than what we are right now and these motherfuckers decided hmm well we can all gain something from this. They they decided to access the lower parts of the ego, if you want to call it that, the, the mind, the, the lower parts of the persona, and fall into 
if you want to call it, the sins. It's those aspects of beingness where you are holding on to pain and, and trauma and utilizing things to only benefit you. And yes, if you're in, a, say, a survival mode or something and you need to do this in the moment so that so that you can prosper and survive and, you know, get out of the situation that you're in. There's a vast difference here between those two. Because in one, you're doing so with absolute awareness that you are doing this only to benefit yourself and to satiate a certain feeling of hunger And in, in, in the densest sense of, of the meaning. And then in the other, you are doing so with an awareness that you're doing this as an embitterment. Even if that embitterment is, is for specifically for the self or in, in that kind of mentality. That that's still going to benefit the all because that's just how it works. When one of us becomes free, then the more of us become free. The one is the all, the all is the one. It's just how this shit works. If you want to liken it to holographic, that true is how it is. Uh, huh. The, the popular phrase on demand, the quantum. Which is also an effort to quantify, to label, and make things, make things seem, oh yes, it's infinite, and it's quantum, and, you know, the power of the observer, but they fail to recognize what the observer actually does. It's not just observing, it's creating. This is the form of the human mind. It absorbs, extracts at the same moment. And within all of these moments is the monad, the, the moment. A beingness. These words, they they are just trying to describe uh, a nature, a quintessential essence, uh, uh, and it's trying to describe the formless. It's trying to put that into a form that can be taken so many different ways. Whenever you just experience it for yourself and you access a language beyond what you've been taught and you just, you, you just need to, <laughs> you don't need to talk anymore in your head. You just look, observe, listen, experience it with all your senses, dissolve those into, uh, into one sense, an omni-sense. And then you, you can just go around and, and, and look. You don't need to. You don't need to necessarily do or, or think. You can just observe it and see the layers dissolve to get back into the true, essential essence of how things got to be the way they are. How something was created as a specific object. You just look around you and you see. You access these truth vibrations. You access the inner standing with, with just observing and allowing life to be the teacher and the answer at all times. And then you can, you know, come across other yous who will look you in the eye and engage with you somewhat on 
communicating without words, just with the sight and looking into someone's eyes. There's <laughs> that's one of the magical, most magical fucking things you can ever experience whenever you're in a human form and you lay your eyes upon and into another human form and within another human eye. It's, it, it, I don't know, it, it's one of the most healing things you can really do for, for one another is to be the mirror and to allow both of yourselves to merge and meld and access, you know, with this mirror effect, you can access like certain halls or you can call them like pathways to where your mind and your thought like echo off of, reverberate off of the halls of memory. You can call this like Akashic Records or Akasha. There are many ways to access this. But to me, the most meaningful way always is to access it through an engagement where my heart just melts into it or, or is lit, lit up with the supreme amazing beauty of, of, of inspiration maybe uh, in the form of a certain piece of art, a certain piece of music, or just someone talking, it's, it's an art form. Music especially and if you decide to tune in to the right music within yourself, maybe you can have that outer experience present itself to you in the form of some kind of amazing fucking poetry, form, grace, to get sick with the muse. So yeah, I didn't really get into <laughs> necessarily what I wanted to. Um, shite happens. But one of the things that was mentioned in that video that I had up was creating a community. So this is something that now is taking on uh, this movement, because this is a movement that's happening, uh, and I've been waiting and watching to see who is picking up on it, to see how it's going to be received in, in this kind of uh, realm where we're at. But uh, we're, we're on another surge of living more naturally, uh, creating communities, and, and being around like-minded people who want and, and feel the need to live like this, to live in communities where they are surrounded with, with nature, uh, with, with people of like mind and like heart. And the kinds of communities that are going to spring up very, very soon, because it's already happening uh, in other realms, uh, like wildfire. But now it's going to really take off because of uh, media outlets, and uh, it's already been, I don't know what the word is. Uh, one vibration has already attached to a higher vibration. <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. Um, one construct can't help but attach itself to a, another form of energy that uh, the creation... <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. But whatever. Maybe it will some people. The creation of this construct was to 
attach its tendri- tendrils, its its tentacles <laughs> around uh, where the flow of attention is in the collective, and that flow has been uh, called and controlled and been able to be controlled up until now and now uh, for a, for a little while now it has not been able to been to be controlled so at best what uh, the powers that be uh, what the fuck ever <sighs> the ones that were in control or, or thought they were eh, at least best that they have been able to do up until now is fake enough trick enough people into the fakery of their control to trick it to trick enough people to to believe that they are still controlling the narrative and that that's dissolved now so now we're just seeing the after effects of the people that still want and, and need to uh, con- to hold on to certain narratives, to hold on to certain emotions. So whenever we're talking about like, the offended or triggered culture, uh, this is kind of what that is: is uh, an a, a pressurized focus upon. A certain feeling and so whenever those feelings are heightened and people are caught up in group think and want to go along with their friends and their peers and be a part of something then they're going to fall prey to the things controlling the narrative controlling guiding manipulating the flow of emotion on a collective level and siphoning that down into more more <laughs> more than anything that siphoning is happening on other realms and that's that's definitely not something we're going to get into either it's a little way uh, that's something that you're only going to access the knowing of if you've done the inner work and and you're able to see beyond the constructs of uh, language of what you've been taught language is so yes this thing that is becoming uh, more and more pronounced is the eco villages or communes or uh, um, there's a lot of I mean most of it especially westernized is very uh, new agey and uh, still operating within the uh, safety structures that have been set up for you the mentalities of uh, how things are which is why you know, Western uh, more mentality uh, especially the larger, like, eco-villages or communities, they, uh, have failed or been caught up in the negative aspects of emotion and beingness, greed, and the, the feeling or the need to, ha- the, to think that you need to have something, and failing to realize that it's all provided for you. Always. Just wake up to it. Go walk out in nature. Walk out into the woods. Everything is... <laughs> anything and everything that you need. And, and more so. Because the, the, the environment is going to be more pristine. Your senses are going to be heightened. Your... The pressure is different. There's so much life around you in language, living language all around you, communicating with you specifically, because whenever you walk out in nature, it is waiting on you to wake up, to listen, 
to communicate with it, to feel it. It's waiting on you to feel it. The earth is waiting on you to feel again. And more and more of us are, so... <laughs> That's why shit's changing. We're feeling our home again. We're feeling the truth again. So yeah, I'll, I'll end this with uh, how I wanted to begin it, which, <laughs> which was that uh, I'm seeing the right, I don't say right kind of people, but the, the certain kind of people that I've been waiting for to get interested into having certain kind of communities. Because this is going to look different than like the uh, what you may look up on the internet, which are, there's some really amazing things going on, but because we live in this realm right here that we are in, in the uh, U.S. of A, <laughs> uh, we're going to need a little bit different approach and to still be able to use uh, these tools that we have been bred and led into using. But to do so in a different manner, to do so in a manner that we're just using these things to reach people, to show people where the truth is. So yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot of transformations going on individually and thus collectively with with a lot of people and shit's amping up on both polarities. So it's it's, it's really the skies even are, are uh, indicating this uh, pretty. Accurately and consistently as they do. See us feel feel the vibrations. <laughs> oh my gosh. Feel those good vibrations and breathe in that good ass prana. Get real with it. Get clear with it. Feel it. Peace.